Hey guys, this is Dan Nichols on the information page for the course, How to Hit Harder Than a Mofo. And uh, with us is Lightning Rod, also known as Douglas Rod, but he got the name because he's been in the, uh, you've been in law enforcement forever, right, Doug? Correct, over 40 years. Over 40 years, and you guys can see some of the stuff in the background. I, 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 I've i never seen more, uh, man, all that stuff that you sent over, the SWAT team, spe uh, special forces units, all this different stuff. Give us a little of your background, share a little of your history. I just want to say that, uh, you know, like Bruce Lee said, to to study every style and take what's what works out of it for you. So I just started, uh, I got in the black belt and karate dough. Uh, I was um, tournament fighting and I ended up in a fight and was actually pulling my punches. So I got into tongue sudo, which turned into kickboxing. And in uh, six weeks, I became the undefeated uh, Michigan amateur uh, kickboxing champion. And I end up getting a little trouble with the law. So it was almost like go to war or go to jail. So all that went away and I went into, into the military. I was a military police officer and um, we were combat support. So I got attached to third of the seven special forces. And I've also been attached to uh, first of the 20th special forces over in, uh, I did operation desert storm and I did, uh, uh, operation uh, just cause in panama and i would teach one of the california kickboxing champion his name was jim west he was a chief warrant officer helicopter pilot and me and him hit it right off real well so i was able to become attached to his unit he was a uh, a special forces um, helicopter pilot so i was able to uh, train you know elite special forces unit uh, the snatch and grab missions and, and, uh, uh, basically, uh, I, I, I had some ninja, um, tactics also. I would teach them some nin ninja assassination techniques and that type of stuff. And, uh, basically teach them how to dispatch enemy soldiers. So that's where it all started. And then it all carried on through, um, I've spent time policing in Argentine township, Michigan police officer and, I, uh, at the same time, was working for the Michigan Department of Corrections in Detroit. I did uh, 25 years in Detroit. And so far, with all my military and combat experience, uh, I've never been defeated. And I always said that I, I wish I didn't absolutely love to fight, but uh, I just absolutely love to fight. But then when, uh, when I, I, I saw the Russian Sistema style and it looked like um, a mixture between Tai Chi, because I, I, I've been in Dim Mok studying uh, the pressure points, and in karate, until you get to the expert level, they teach you blocks, high blocks, low blocks, and what you're really doing is you're striking pressure points on the arm when they're coming after you, so your blocks are actually strikes, and you got to get to the high level to find all that out. But as a person who I would be considered, uh, I would consider myself an expert in combat training. And I have trained, um, two champions in kickboxing, mixing the dim mock, uh, pressure points. When I go to, uh, I would strike, uh, to stun them and then catch them with an elbow. And, uh, the guy, um, goes by G man and another one called Stonehenge Jackson. Both of them have taken championship, uh, titles, uh, I was working in um, Sterling Heights for a while uh, in a uh, called the, the compound, which was a mixed martial arts training uh, thing. But to say all that, I, I really want to talk about George. Um, when I say I would love to, I, I wish I didn't love to fight so much. Uh, it, when I met the power of George and Sistema, I was watching it on videos, watching the Russians pretty much beat down their soldiers and i got every video on it that i could that i could uh get and then when i found out that i didn't have to go to canada or didn't have to go to russia to learn it that george i was in royal oak and he was in royal oak so okay so you're so you're local correct okay and i met up with george and experienced the the sheer power 
like I call it, he hits like a sledgehammer and he will let you know it. You, you want to know what it feels like. It don't take long. And, uh, he would literally, and I'm, I'm six, two and 270 pounds. And he would push me so, uh, fast and hard, uh, all the way across the garage. We would be at one end of the garage and I'd go flying into the wall on the other side. And I just couldn't understand how him being, especially he's about 50 pounds lighter than me. And I would even lean into it and, uh, try to, to stop him. And he just, he was just able to still uproot me and send me flying across the garage. And then when it came to, uh, the strikes, I was all bruised up. I was in a new relationship and trying to figure out how I was going to tell my new girlfriend that, uh, I got bruises all over my chest. So what, what type of things she'd think I'm into or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was, I was bruised all the time. So I got my, uh, my son and in, involved in it cause he's a black belt in Hapkido. And, uh, he was about George's, um, height and uh, weight. So I brought him in to let him be the, uh, I called it the, the tackle dummy cause I got tired of getting knocked around so much. And, uh, basically, like I said, just to say that he hits like a freight freight train or he hits like a sledgehammer. That's what I called it. I did feel the shoulder roll he does and and it felt oh, like slam. He, <laughs> he's, like fam he's famous for that. Boom. That slam. That, oh, I've, I've been hit by that. And the thing that I've never understood, uh, I've tried to figure it out. You know, when you, when, when you've studied combat art your whole life, you try to look at him and, and figure out what in the world he's doing, but he, he comes from an inch or two away. Now I didn't really do a whole lot on the one and three inch punch about Bruce Lee. I never really got it until later on into my, uh, studies, but it's still, it just amazes me how hard he can hit from, from nowhere. I couldn't even imagine him throwing a wild haymaker, but uh, that ain't even the way he does it. And he, and he's very uh, powerful. Yeah. And not only powerful. And the other thing that I've, uh, I've experienced here lately, really, cause we've been working on putting together the course videos and all that. Um, he did one where he just punched me from uh, try to do it sideways. You know, he just went like this, flicked his wrist, you know, knocking like, on a door. And it, it, I felt like I'd been hit with a battering ram. You know, it felt like somebody like the SWAT teams use those, those metal things to bust <laughs> open the doors. That's what it felt like. It was just an awful gut punch. And that was, that was literally just flicking his wrist into me. There was no arm movement, no hip, no leg, no twisting, no pecs, you know, none of that stuff. Boom. I'm not sure if you've ever seen the psychological, uh, the psychological um, aspect of Sistema where they call it no, no touch hitting. And um, if you look at any of the videos, the problem with it is as an expert, if you don't have an open mind, you're going to look at it and you're either going to think guys are, you're faking it, which I was totally convinced, especially after I felt the power, then I never doubted anymore because even in pressure points, you know, you watch them on the videos and they'll slap and knock their guys unconscious. Well, I've been knocked unconscious and I've knocked prisoners unconscious with it. So I know for a fact it works and I would love to demonstrate it on a, a non-believer, you know, to put it on them. Mm -hmm. But, but the guys, when they do it, you know, they say, I'm only going to do it to my students. I won't do it to the news camera guy over here because, and it can disrupt, you're disrupting your whole, uh, your chi, which is mixed with your blood, like that magnetic energy you feel. Uh, and, and it mixes with your chi. And then there's something psychological that I still haven't figured out either. But I do know that George, when I asked him to demonstrate it on me, I said, what about the psychological aspect where somebody just freezes? And when he holds up his hand, it's concerning, especially when you felt the power. But he literally, he took his hand and then when he, he, he made a few moves with it and I literally went right into the ground without him even touching me. And I mean, uh, there's something real psychological about it that I haven't figured out. Yeah. And I think that the big part there to underscore is, and I really like that you said it that way. It wasn't magical. It was psychological. Mm -hmm. and, and George is, um, that's part of one of the courses that we're working on and are part of, you know, 90% of this whole striking power that George possesses. And he'll tell you straight up, is the metaphysics of it. It's the 90% is what's going on up here and how you, how you do what you do. 
Um, exactly. because he said, he said all these guys, you know, he said they, they, they're lifting weights. They're, you know, moving medicine balls around. They all think that's going to give them more punching power. He said, that's external power. It's totally different. It's totally different. Yeah. And then he, another one he's working on, him and I are going to do it as a, one of the videos is, um, of kind of like dispelling myth, the myths around psychic power versus psychological. George is just like, he's just not a big believer. He said there's very few people that understand uh, the one high-ranking Russian guy, Kadashinkov, I think was his name. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's the guy that George George fully knows gets it at that level. But, um, but yeah, I like that you underscored the psychological piece because that's, um, you, George will steal your intention, right? So you go to do a move and George <laughs> will steal, he'll steal that intention from you. And he calls it stealing your intention. He does. Stealing your intention. It's fascinating. So awesome. Um, it's very. Yeah. Hey, um, could you do me a favor? I just, because this is going to be good for editing. Just say, George, George hits like a, sl- uh, George hits like a sledgehammer. Say that one more time for me. George hits like a sledgehammer. Good, good. And there was one more in there. You said that was pretty good. Well, we'll steal that, but thank you for that. Hey, do you got anything else to add in closing? Anybody, anybody's thinking about taking the course. Do you have any thoughts around it? I'll be honest with you. I would actually take the course. You know, I, as a, uh, a person who's in the arts, you know, I, I'm still a learner and I'll, I'll learn anything that I can. And I'm still, still trying to find a quicker way to take somebody out even now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that that's the greatest way to be the way you are right now, where you say, Hey man, I'm, we're, I'm still a learner. Aren't we all right? We're here. We're all still, <laughs> we're all still learning. Definitely. Yeah. And the only problem with the guys who who actually uh, are high ranking, you know, they would really need to feel it because I know, I know, you know, close minded people that I've been with, or they say, just run them through the repetitions. I've always said, let me train it right each time. So that way you got 10 times you've been taught right, as opposed to just throwing repetitions at a bag and hoping you pick it up some way down the line. Um, but, uh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I, the in the bag in the bag thing as george will say you really can't demonstrate this on a bag when you feel that hit if you did that to a bag it would look like taking a hammer and hitting a bag like you said like a sledgehammer it wouldn't the bag wouldn't do this you know it wouldn't fold oops it wouldn't fold right like everybody's impressed by trying to hit a bag and make it fold around their hands or jump to the ceiling because it looks real cool it's eye candy it does. but it, it doesn't does. feel like it doesn't feel when george hits the bag like that he can do that to the bag i've seen him for years when we were in eighth grade he could do that but, um, those but, big beds that I trained on the, we call it the Bob dummy. It's full of water at the bottom, you mm-hmm. know, I, with all the other officers and I'm demonstrating for them how to hit, I can take, when I hit it, that whole big thing picks up and moves. And the last time I was in training, I actually knocked the bolts out of the back of it. So I know I can hit hard, but one thing I would say also, uh, if I had, I would not fight George if I had the opportunity to run away. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that one. We'll definitely keep that. I'm going to.